Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. I was a judge here at the uh, Imagine Cup U.S. Finals in Redmond, Washington, and one of the uh, groups that I was judging was this one, Life Lens, and uh, one of the guys he was the primary, I would say you were the primary geek. I, I would have to say I guess I was a primary geek. I don't know if I would tell anyone that, but I, I'll go with that. I think it was it was obvious in the way that you, you, you kind of knew exactly the technical response, and you were like, right, even if you weren't the one answering, you knew what was going on. And I figured, well, for my audience, they definitely want to talk to other geeks. So I've got a good idea about what Life Lens is and its scope. But could you explain to everybody out there what exactly it is that you're doing here and what it is that you're doing? Yeah, definitely. So um, originally we came up with the idea to be able to actually use a microscopic lens that goes on the back of the, of the camera, uh, the camera of the phone. So what we want to do is we wanted to actually take that, take that one step further. We wanted to actually see if we can actually detect things in the image. So with that, we decided to build a computer vision algorithm that actually detects both cells as well as malaria. So with that, we were able to come up with life lens. Now, one of the first steps we have is that right now, to be able to diagnose malaria, you have to actually do a whole process, look through a microscope, you know, it could be tiring to find everything that's in there. But we wanted to make it much faster, this way you can actually have a, sc a scanning type algorithm. So with that, we're able to bring up this. So what we do here is we actually then go through the actual image, find out all the information about what's going on, and we actually count all the cells. So with that, let me go and load up here. With that, we actually then can easily find everything that's going on. There we go. So we can easily find out everything that's going on. So I don't know if you can easily see, but we can actually, there's two, two infected cells in here. So since we can find out where the cells are located, how many cells are in there, we can then say, let's see if I'm infected. So we go through each cell, we rate it, see if it's, if it's infected, and then from that we actually gather the data. Next. Go ahead. And, and just to provide context to this, I mean, how many people die of malaria every year? Millions and millions and millions. It's, it's, I, I, I'm, I, I saw the number and when Cy put the, put the logistics together, I was very happy that I'm doing what I'm doing because it is phenomenal how much is happening. So you're basically taking a process that would normally take a long time, putting it in the palm of somebody's hand and making it almost instant. Yes, definitely. We, and also to help you know, prove that false positive rate to make sure people are being diagnosed that need to be diagnosed. So I just wanted to, before we continue down the path of the demo, to provide Con this is a big deal. It, it is. It's a humongous deal. I, I, I'm very. Pa I'm very happy and passionate with what we have, and I'm glad that it works. Okay. So now the the software has scanned and detected how many cells, how many infected cells. What happens now? So what you can do now is since we're using a cell phone in this case, most cell phones and smartphones nowadays, especially Windows Phone Sevens, have GPS built into it. So if I'm you know middle in Africa or somewhere you know remote, I can then upload this data and actually grab the GPS information directly off the device, and then what we can do is we can send that data directly to the cloud and where that data is sent is actually sent up there. So we've got a few points up there that are on top of each other. You're probably not going to see the one that's going to pop up. There's number three popped up. So, so you geolocated. So now you've not only got an analysis on the blood that, that you've taken a sample from, but you've geolocated exactly where the sample was taken, at what time. You've got, was that the image then that was associated with this particular sample or is that not, it's just a, 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 a Ah, there we go. That's the picture that we see on the phone. So that actually gives you a live image. So the nice thing about this is we're actually working on algorithms to be able to help in pre preventative measures. We're going to be working with weather patterns as well as humidity and be able to see, predict exactly what's happening on. So since we know the information, like you said, geo coordinates, we know the information that's going on. We're going to be working with other teams as well as ourselves to be able to expand that technology to be able to detect things going on. This way we can see, you know, be able to help prevent an outbreak that may happen in the future. So then in terms of working like actually in the field, do you have any trials that are happening at this point? Right now we're actually working with Harvard. Um, we, uh, Cy is actually one of, uh, one of the students actually over at Harvard Business School, but he's working with their team over at Harvard to actually give live testing. We're actually working with live, live information. So right now we're actually grabbing data that we have. We have existing data, case data from a different um, sample of images, but we're actually going to be working with them because it's hard to actually get a live like piece of malaria. So with that, we were actually going to be taking the device in their labs, they're going to be testing it, and they're going to give us their, their feedback to tell us what we can do to advance it and improve it. I'm surprised that something like this hasn't happened before. I mean, how are tests currently done, if tests are done at all? I mean, do, do, does someone just walk into a clinic and just automatically get vaccinated even if they don't have it? 
So that does happen. There's actually some people like will have a fever and they'll be like they'll just assume that they may be you know, need to be vaccinated. But what they're if they do decide to go through the testing process, they actually do the dyeing the same way we do on the same existing slides. And with that, they actually have someone look through a microscope and actually find those clusters manually. But if you're if you have an image that may have like a small amount of clusters, like we have an image that has like three of them, but one was just a little bit light than the other one, you, the human eye may not see that. So we, this is where we come with our screening tool to be able to say, hey, we've got something right here. You guys really need to check this out. So it's one of those things we want to make sure that it works perfectly. And nice thing about that too is that not only is it going to be designed for this, but we are adapting it to work for sickle cell detection as well as anemia. So that's that's the next step. So like you're looking at uh, p potentially even detecting uh, you know uh, blood-borne uh, viruses, bacteria, diseases in general. Yep. So what we're doing is we're doing some research because we already have a cell detect we have a cell detector built in there. So since we already know what's going on as far as cells, we're going to modify that cell detector to be actually look at what other stuff's going on. So if we know that a sickle cell is a deformed cell or a little bit a little bit olive shape, if we know this if we know what the healthy cells look like, we can then compare that with the malaria similar to kind of like using a malaria detector, a hybrid version of it, to be able to easily adapt it to find sickle cells. Now, we're, right, we have a prototype right now, and it's it's still working. It's getting there. But, you know I mean, it's 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 getting there. So, it, But that's why you're here. Yeah. I mean, this is this is to kind of get you to the next uh, this stage. This is your first or second Imagine Cup? This is my first Imagine Cup. Um, some of the team members, this is their second one, but this is personally my first one. And what's your background? Uh, I'm in computer engineering. Uh, I've done a lot of, you know, obviously I'm. A, I guess I'm a geek. Dude, I I, I can see it like a mile off. <laughs> you know, I, I I do play, you know, Halo. I play all those games and stuff like that. But I'm, you know, a computer engineer at heart. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, why don't you do CS? You always do a lot of software. But I like doing hardware too. So I develop a lot on the mobile platform. So I have a lot, a heavy background on that, and a heavy background in computer vision. I've done stop sign detectors. I've actually done um, projects with a Kinect where you build rebuild 3D rooms using the Kinect. So I've had I've had fun. You know what I mean? So that's one of those things that I was like. Wilson's like, hey, let's do this on a phone. I'm like, let's do it. So you've got a, a Windows Phone 7 device here, but are you going to be building out the software and specifically the uh, image detection algorithms on other platforms? Is there any open source, uh, I guess, avenue for what you have? What kind of uh, intellectual property are you looking at? So side so probably know more of that, but I know we are we are looking more for an intellectual property aspect, not as necessarily open source. But we're also at the same time to make sure we work with other companies to make sure we can help save as many people. As far as other platforms go, I we developed this software to make sure it can be easily adapted, um, not only just on this platform, but me being the developer, I wanted to make sure that if I did do it on another platform, I wouldn't cause too much of a headache for myself. So. And, and the the missing component, what we ha what we don't have right now is is a lens. You said uh, specifically, like how how expensive would this lens be? Plastic, glass. So there's actually different types. So there's ones that are made out of plastic, one made out of glass. In our case, we can do plastic, um, just because it's a little bit cheaper. And if it breaks, it breaks. I mean, glass can cause a lot of problems. So it's actually very cheap. It's actually forty-seven dollars. And a lot of people say to us, "Wow, that's really, really cheap." But it is there. The technology is there. And we're working with a company that works very well, and they specialize in this. So we're making sure it works one with our phones as well as any other phones in the future. So th this is actual technology that we can use. Yeah, you can actually grasp it. If if you wanted to, you actually could. Yeah. I'm glad you didn't ask for samples this morning, and I'm also glad you didn't like release uh, like a, a whole flood of mosquitoes into the audience. That probably would not have uh, been good. Yeah, well, they, you know, we try to be not as intense, but we try to get our point through. No, the, the point was very well taken. I mean, it's a huge deal, not specifically in developed countries, but underdeveloped countries. Yeah, it is. It is a very big deal, and you know, not only is this all also like advancing, you know, computer vision technology in general, but especially on a you know a device, this could be utilized by a lot of applications. You know, I mean, not only just sell. You mean we can also adapt it to even just your basic augmented reality. You know, what I mean, there's a lot of features with computer vision that it can be not only stuck with this. So we there's a lot of potential out there. So, so there's no potential of like just spitting into a slide and then detecting from there. I'm just not much in the whole drawing of blood thing. You know, maybe eventually when we can get down to that level, uh, I, I I can't wait that I all have to do. Personally, I don't like being pricked either, so I, I would rather just spit into something and then go from there. Can, can we work on that next? Maybe if this if this doesn't work out, like work on the spit thing? Yeah, sure. I'll just have to get, uh, I'll have to try to get some samples here and there. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, thank you and, and good job. Thank you. I appreciate it very much. Thank you.